Morning. Welcome back to the breakfast show that brings what you need to think about as we begin the day. And uh, it's uh, 23rd of uh, January 2019. It's Wednesday. My name is Sam Gitoko and I'm joined by uh, three uh, distinguished persons to look at uh, the news review. Gladys Wanga, Member of Parliament for Homa Bay County. Karibu sana. Good morning. Taitas Kamala, uh, Member of Parliament for Lurambi. I hope I got your name yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kamega. Yes. And Gabriel Muthuma. Uh, not from any constituency, but uh, none list in, oh, oh, on public affairs <laughs> and governance. Uh, thank you, Sam. For, and thank you for making time for us on ah, Daybreak. And I want us to begin with uh, what's making headlines in the dailies. Uh, for instance, on uh, the front page of the Standard, you'll see questions as Matiangi gets more powers. Uh, this is in line with an executive order issued by the president who gives Interior CS an expanded mandate to supervise development uh, <laughs> programs and projects. Of course, uh, the details are that the new role and reporting lines are that the CS is to chair the national Development Implementation and Communication Committee, which uh, has uh, all cabinet secretaries as members. And according to the executive order number one of 2019, Matiangi will report to the president. Then number four, uh, the CS will provide supervisory leadership throughout the delivery of all national government programs and projects. And five, he is to monitor and evaluate follow-up mechanisms for resources allocated for projects uh, to ensure proper utilization and realization of the targeted outcomes. Now, if you look at the front page of the Daily Nation, you'll see a similar story. <coughs> Matiangi, new role, deals blow to Ruto. So obviously, uh, very different. Uh, the standard is just reporting on um, uh, questions, but uh, the Daily Nation talking about it's a blow to the Deputy President. Uh, Super Minister, huge portfolio gives Interior <laughs> Cabinet Secretary powers over security, administration, implementation of government projects and fight against corruption, denying the DP the opportunity to launch public projects and claim credit for development in 2022 just claim. And I want us to begin from there. This executive order, uh, of course, establishes uh, those different committees, uh, the cabinet uh, committee, uh, the regional uh, commissioners committees, the eight of them, and then 47 uh, county committees on development. Does it have anything to do with the powers of the deputy president? Does it really deny him the opportunity uh, to continue with what he has been doing? Who wants to begin? You want to go? OK, <coughs> this is my take. You know, you know the president uh, has the powers to do what he wants to do with his cabinet. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> with these new executive orders, you know, that's when I think that we need a referendum in this country, mm -hmm. whereby, again, mm -hmm. we can begin to look at different roles and uh, what the executive is supposed to do mm -hmm. um, so that we, do, we no longer have um, uh, roadside declarations mm -hmm. like it was in the past. Mm -hmm. But it's just a realization mm -hmm. that we cannot continue with the old dispensation that we had. Mm -hmm. We have to move further mm -hmm. and do a little amendment mm -hmm. so that we can redefine. So <coughs> that it doesn't come like shock. Like, you know, really, uh, the executive order has come and what is he supposed to do? In terms of the deputy president, I don't want to say anything much because I'm not in the executive, but I would think he is uh, the principal uh, assistant, assistant to the to president, president. Uh -huh. and therefore mostly I would think that it's a constitutional office number one number two um, his boss the president will send and delegate as he deems fit mm -hmm. so I don't think that uh, he is affected very much because to me his boss is the president and if the president chose to you say he's not affected very much but that would signal he's affected if yes how um, to me I would say he's not affected that much because the mm -hmm. president is his boss. Mm -hmm. And if the president wants to send him tomorrow mm -hmm. to do something, mm -hmm. he will. But to me, I'm thinking, look, to end all these things, I think we need to get to a place where we can have a referendum and do a little amendments and changes and redefine ourselves. Okay, all right. So the, the executive order sort of uh, reorganizes on how things will be done, the, the monitoring of projects, the funding, financing of projects. Does it have anything to do with the powers of the presidency? Well, I, uh, well I, I'd like to say a few things. One, I think the president is committed to delivering on his legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at this executive order of, of, of 2019, mm -hmm. the president is committed to delivering his big four agenda and delivering on his legacy. Mm -hmm. And he's committed to, you know, unity of the country, mm -hmm. one. Two, I think C.S. Matiangi <coughs> has proved himself over time. Mm -hmm. He's an effective uh, person. Mm -hmm. He's a performer. He's a reformer. He's, he's done his job. Um, it, you know, and, and, and therefore being made chairman of, of committee to coordinate is, it, you know, fits well. Mm -hmm. um, 
But you know what I'd like to say is that what the president has done is not is not unique because it's it's in line with his with his his functions. If you look at uh, 132, um, 3B, 3C of the Constitution, mm -hmm. by a decision of published in the Gazette, assigned responsibility for implementation and administration of an act of Parliament to a cabinet <coughs> secretary to the extent not inconsistent with any act of Parliament. Mm -hmm. So I think the president is just in line with what his constitutional mandate is that sometimes mm -hmm. he can assign. Right. But now relating it to, 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 the, to the deputy president, I think, you know, I, you know, we are a very political uh, <laughs> country and we see everything in that, in that light. Mm -hmm. But I think if Kenyans want service delivery, let's not, let's not put CS Matiangi and the, the DP on a coalition, uh, on a collision course. course. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's just let the, the, you know, because the DP is a politician, right. CS is, is, is a public servant. Who, 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 who has to do certain work as given by the president. But mm -hmm. now with all these headlines, what we've done essentially is we put them on a collision course and therefore we, we don't know whether, you know, how, how that is going to go. But the deputy president mm -hmm. is the principal <coughs> assistant of the president. That's 147 of the constitution. It's, right. it's very clear. He's the principal the, assistant the, the, of, of the president. Right. And, and if uh, the only thing that needs to worry uh, that that is a bit worrying is is what I was mentioning to you that if you look at the executive order of 2018 mm -hmm. and the executive order of 2019 executive order one of 2018 and executive order one of 2019 you see there's a shift there mm -hmm. because 2018 it was the presidency mm -hmm. 2019 it is the executive office of the president <laughs> <laughs> Which means something is shifting somewhere. Right. <laughs> I see what you did there. You're saying that uh, there's no conflict, but you're so, sort of mincing there is. But now the question I want to ask you, Gabriel, yeah. is um, so we see that uh, this committee that will be chaired by C.S. Matiangi, comprising right. of all the cabinet secretaries, right. will be reporting to the president. Right. Um, the deputy president is not a cabinet secretary. Correct. He is not the president. Correct. Where is he in this arrangement? But there's something that uh, Mukeshimua has said, and I and I don't know whether you've uh, actually got it. Mm -hmm. Said uh, the deputy president is a principal assistant mm -hmm. to the president. Mm -hmm. So any report that's coming to the president by design must go or must find solace through the deputy president. So that's a given. And you know, I'm um, actually, it, I, I had never, I, and I agreed, I had never seen that on, mm. uh, on, on those two orders. Yeah. And Majimu has actually pointed it to it. I never saw that the president of the presidency, which is quite uh, something, you know, unique for her to be able to identify that. But from where I'm seated, I think some, what comes out very clearly is that what the president has done, uh, and again, I totally, you know, to a high extent agree with what uh, Majimu uh, Gladys has said, mm -hmm. is that, he has realigned mm -hmm. uh, the delivery, uh, the way the, uh, the government or the national projects have been delivered. That's mm -hmm. all he has, you know, he has, you know, he has a term left, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where he needs to push his big four agenda. And so it's actually very in line with his constitutional mandate to realign how that delivery is going to be done. Mm -hmm. Key to note. Mm -hmm. And this is key to note, apart mm -hmm. from, you know, the sensational headlines that we are reading today, mm -hmm. many people will not, or actually don't recognize that the, uh, the enhancement and implementation of development projects actually is domiciled at the Interior Ministry. So that's among the key things that that ministry is supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So the other added... Uh, uh, what I would call the other added uh, responsibilities that mm -hmm. are heavy that I've seen mm -hmm. is the moving of NTSC and you know and and, and what have you. Right. But anything else is mm -hmm. very strategic in delivering mm -hmm. the, the 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 core mandate mm -hmm. that uh, you know the president wants to leave in terms of legacy. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at how they've structured that top-down approach, it is actually very good because it goes all the way down to the county commissioners. One thing, and I saw you know earlier wrong when you put it uh, on the screens one thing probably which we should or should be a takeaway for us is to note that there has been mm -hmm. an effort given mm -hmm. for those people down there uh, right. the county commissioners mm -hmm. to not only come up with issues but also find solutions this is something that I've never seen in the past so you are being told don't just run up you know uh, the chain the report chain with issues 
you also need to come up with solutions. How do you want? Because you are the one. You are the one who's uh, you know noticing that the issues that are affecting Mwananchi. When uh, Ma goes, uh, you know, to the ground, when she finds issues that are pertain or that are pertinent mm -hmm. in the area of her representation, she knows who to go to, and that information that she presents mm -hmm. will find its way all the way up to the top leadership. So this is a new. Okay. This is a new. And if it works. Hopefully, if it works the way it has been designed, mm -hmm. some I guarantee you, this will be a game changer. Uh, and so, uh, as we focus on development, the delivery of the Big Four agenda and the competing <coughs> ambitions in the political country that Kenya is, does this assure us of delivery? And how do you ensure that the competing uh, um, political ambitions do not hinder the execution of the work that now the committee has been assigned vis-a-vis -vis what other uh, politicians may want to achieve in 2022? I think, uh, Sam, this is what I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, in the interest of our country, good interest of our country, mm -hmm. I think early campaigning is not the best because we know we can't continue with a campaign political cycle mm -hmm. all the, for five years mm -hmm. because Kenyans want service delivery. And uh, I would say maybe, because I'm not in the executive, I don't know, mm -hmm. but I'm just thinking maybe what the president wants to do is um, to make sure the temperatures are down mm -hmm. and uh, people are working and, you know, various cabinet ministers. Uh, in this uh, instance, Dr. Matiangi mm -hmm. is, has been given more responsibilities, <coughs> right. which means maybe he's trying to remove the political anchor of it, mm -hmm. whereby uh, Dr. Matiangi is not political. He's just a civil servant eh? who will just have the energy mm -hmm. of service delivery. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm thinking it is also part of calming the political temperatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Calming the political temperatures. And someone here is saying that, um, or rather the president is quoted as saying that, uh, I have given you authority to deal with anyone, and I mean anyone, coming to give you funny orders. This is Uhuru, is reported to have told uh, the meeting that was being held in Mombasa of a uh, regional uh, commander. And, and I, think, I think Dr. Matiangi, I hope, will be level-headed, mm -hmm. whereby there's not much bullying and these other cabinet secretaries don't feel like they're so inferior, mm -hmm. what, you know, what to Mkono. <laughs> so I just pray that Dr. Matiangi, something doesn't get into his head. I just hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see how that comes in. Because even in Parliament, the way we operate, yeah. we operate in committees yes. where there is a chair of that committee. Yeah. The chair of the committee is not necessarily mm -hmm. a greater member of Parliament than... Mm -hmm. than than the rest of the members of the committee. It's just a first among equals. Right. It's the team leader. It's the one who leads you in, in, in this direction in consolidating. Uh, so what I think what the president is saying is he really, really wants to deliver his legacy. Right. And, and I think if, if when he says, I have given you authority to deal with anyone, mm -hmm. and I mean anyone, mm -hmm. coming to give you funny orders, mm -hmm. he is saying he is the... He, he is the president, yes. and any orders should come from him. And I think when he delegates to, even if it is his principal's assistant or mm. whoever, mm. it will come that he has delegated that that happens. Mm. But I think uh, this issue of people just saying, you know, I'm also here, you know, I'm also so and so, <laughs> do this, you know, I think that is what he's trying to clear. Mm. But what I want to thank the president for is the focus on his legacy mm. and focus on developing Mwananchi. And the ca very bold step he took to say, development is not just for one place. Exactly. Development is for the entire Kenya. I saw him over the weekend mm -hmm. in, 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 when he went to uh, the burial of, of, of Bruce. Yes. He, you know, he passed by the lake and together with uh, His Excellency Raila, you know, they looked at one thing mm -hmm. that is really bothering the people of the entire Lake Victoria, you know, mm -hmm. Gulf, which is the hyacinth, from Busia all the way to uh, Migingo, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Homer Bay is one of those. And I think I really want to thank him and, and Right Honorable Raila for looking at this issue of the hyacinth as a very, very pressing issue and getting back the lake you know, the lost glory, glory of the lake. Mm -hmm. So when we see these things, we appreciate. And when it's good, we say it, it, you know, it's good direction. So what we don't want is this destruction of Siasa Mingi. So I think <laughs> what has been said is right. 2022 politics were kakando. And I right. think that's what everybody in the president's government should do.
I, I just want to highlight a few of the comments that have come from uh, different leaders. Keo South MP Daniel Rono said he found it interesting that a minister would supervise his colleagues. Uh, to him, it looks funny. Other cabinet secretaries reporting to a fellow CS does not make sense. They should instead report to the president or his deputy. The Senate Majority Leader Kipchumba Murkomen instead uh, uh, said that congratulations to the President for the Executive Order Number no. 1 of 2019 and to my friends C.S. Matenge and Rotich for the additional responsibilities. We look forward to a more coordinated service delivery, greater accountability to the people of Kenya. God bless you. And also tweets um, William Ruto. But someone else is saying that um, th that is uh, Opio Wandai, the chair of the Public Accounts Committee, that the law gives him the uh, gives the president prerogative to assign and reassign CSs and other public officers. Uh, but uh, someone else here, uh, Makweni Senator uh, Matula Kilonzo Jr., said he doubted the appointment was meant to alienate any member of the president's cabinet. You know, I, oh, the, the, what I take away from uh, what you've just read, I think, is uh, the comments by Kipchumba Murkomen. Mm. Uh, when he talks about you know the new service delivery you know mantra of how things have been reorganized mm -hmm. and it's very true when you look at it mm -hmm. uh, somewhere I would probably want us to run away from is this issue of where uh, somebody is saying that uh, uh, CS Matiangi will you know will boss around everybody right. remember it's a committee and like Mohishmua Gladys has said mm. even in Parliament they have these committees when a chairman is just there is somebody to guide the operations of that committee and be able to bring order within that committee because at the end of the day you have to select one of you mm -hmm. who will actually be able to you know to, to organize that particular committee but at the end of the day the, the, what the president will be expecting is not a one-man show it's a report a progressive development minded report from a committee right. that is why it is a committee that is made up of all CSs mm. right so that is very key the other thing that uh, actually we also need to take away from uh, you know from uh, from that uh, uh, committee that has been formed mm -hmm. uh, is for us not to read too much into it in mm -hmm. matters of power mm -hmm. because the minute you start reading that into it mm -hmm. then the focus shifts and you know on this one again I'm agreeing with the uh, when uh, you know she's saying that here the issue is about the legacy of the president, mm -hmm. the big four agenda. Mm -hmm. And you may recall again, you come back to something we were discussing here last time, uh, Sam, where the president, his campaign mantra was 40 million strong. Yes. And this is where I agree again. With, the issue is not a, a president who is serving a given community. No, here you are talking a symbol of national unity. You are traversing the entire country. Coming back to the homegrown solutions, you've just seen again the issue of uh, the hyacinth in Kisumu. These are people coming with, you know, a local, you know, uh, solution mm -hmm. to a local problem. And that is why from where uh, the president is seated, that needs to trickle all the way down to the people in that environment who are able to come up with solutions and then bring those you know uh, solutions right. uh, where funding probably will be required and that is you know now this way you can take it to the committee and the committee will hasten that you know to to the head of state so i think it is a very well thought out systematic way okay. of delivering projects and i think this is where we need to give it vitality by saying you know what let's see how it works let us support it because anything else when you start this power you know juggling yeah. use and you we are going to lose that we are going to lose the plot and let me just right. speak it from gabriel and say mm. there are 47 county committees yeah. chaired by the county commissioner probably yeah so are we saying the county commissioner is greater is it, than the, the governor exactly. <laughs> you know then there are eight regional <laughs> committees chaired by regional regional uh, commissioners right are we what are we i mean so if if we want to play that uh, politics of who's greater than the other mm. then we should start it at at the counties coming up but this is a delivery mechanism right. i think let's let's uh, just give it space to to deliver these are committees i mean there are committees within cabinet there are committees within parliament there are committees and these are just internal mechanisms of delivery mm -hmm. uh, if we don't if we remove them from the from the politics totally. all right